My name is Bloodlust and welcome to Indie Bits, the show where I give my first impressions on new indie games. In the cyberpunk world of Dangerous Scavenger, an artificial intelligence takes control of all machines and starts a revolution against humans. It is now up to a group of outcasts called the Scavengers to save humanity. You start by selecting between different scavengers that have their own unique stats and abilities, and a weapon of your choice. You then get started on the first randomly generated level just to realize that this all takes place on top of buildings. But don't worry, it's completely safe. Every level of the game contains a set amount of enemies that you deal with in classic twin stick shooter fashion. When they're all destroyed, the door to the next level unlocks, but most times there is more than one door to choose from. This is where the map comes in handy which shows you what you'll face against depending on the path you take. You can run into different types of enemy rooms, a hacking station where you endure waves of enemies, and an elite room where you face against stronger foes. As you defeat enemies and open chests, you get new weapons to try out, a resource called Scrap bullets, and a lot of different accessories that give you passive abilities, like drones that help you out, or saws that spin around you. You also sometimes run into stores where you can spend the scrap you collected for healing or accessories. If you complete 15 levels, you reach the boss of that stage, and if you successfully defeat it, you can return to the main hub. In it, you can spend any spare scrap on the workbench to enhance your weapons or accessories, and then move on to the next level and repeat that process again. But being this game a roguelike, if at any point you die, you lose everything including scrap, weapons, accessories and your stage progression. The only thing you get out of a run is that your achieved score can unlock new items to find in future runs. In general, I enjoy this game. The controls are very responsive, the amount of different accessories allows you to make an interesting build every run, it's nice that in the quality settings my computer specs are represented, and there is even a co-op mode for up to 4 players that will be available on release. But there are quite a few things I didn't enjoy during my time with it. Mainly that even though in every stage the design of the level changes, the only change is in appearance since the layout and enemies you fight against stays the same, making levels very repetitive after a short while. And I didn't like how the difficulty was handled. I would have liked some more different game modes to select and difficulty settings. Because of this, on my Should You Try It scale, I give it a score of... Worth a shot! <laughs>